New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. We have Robert Glasper. Oh, yeah. The brother Kareem. The brother Kareem. Super producer Kareem. And uh, the man from... I don't even know who you are. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I'm the South Side dude, man. Yeah, Chicago. <laughs> Come on, man. You sure? Okay, coming, man. All What's of a up? sudden, like, you became... I, I mean, your social activism is great. Like, yeah. I'm with it. And then all of a sudden, it was like, he went straight mustache. I was like, he's really taking this social... He's going civil rights. <laughs> yeah. Civil rights <laughs> 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 mustache. Yeah. That's right. Nah, he's man, going straight <laughs> March on Washington <laughs> with the mustache. Hey, man. This, this, you know, this is for a movie, man. It's, it's a movie that takes place in the late 70s. So, you know, they was rocking them. Yeah, I mean, I, remember, I see I remember you. them old dudes All wearing right. these So this isn't, you're not going to keep this look. Oh, no, hell no. But they call, they call me a 70s porno star with this look. I mean, okay, I see it, I see it, they, I see they, it. They, a kid, hey, I was at a wedding and a kid was asked his dad, he was like, Dad, is that Steve Harvey? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man, that was tough, this man. Is, this is tough. That this was bad. This is tough. This is tough. Now, you know, I respect it. I you respect give him a hard time when he has a beard. You give him a hard yeah, time. No, because yeah. he stole my look. Nah, That's what you brother, said. I originated no, that I look. started the beard. You had to go to I on, rocked the beard. Then you went to beard, and I was stuck because you're more famous than me. <laughs> so I be walking through the airport. They like, come in. <laughs> man, man. Come on, uh, bro. You guys have an amazing group called uh, August Green, which is uh, Robert Glasper on the keys. Um, Reem, you, you're doing the beats, right? Drums. And drums. Cream Riggins on drums, Common on the on the vocals. On the vocals, yeah. and then you guys feature other artists. Is yeah. that the, am I, am I saying it right? Well, it's really just, yeah, this group is just a collaboration. They they produce the music. I, of course, I'll be writing the songs, and then we also had another artist named Samora Penderhughes who writes some stuff on Burners Play Bass, but it's really this collective. We, we've come up together, like, we've known each other for a long time, so the combination is just us just making great music, yeah. yeah. Um, can Robert, you tell an amazing story of your days in New York City and uh, during the uh, Soul Quarians and mm -hmm. D'Angelo and yep. days. Talk about how this relationship came together. Just your version of it as a as a, as somebody teaching people how to play the keys out here and run around <laughs> making music. With exactly. Well, you know, I went to I went to college with Bilal. Okay, you know, a great singer Bilal. And so uh, Rashid and Common knew each other, and Bilal was going over to the Electric Lady. Rashid show. and Common. Bilal, 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 Bilal and Common. Rashid and Common. Bilal and Rashid. 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 Yeah, Separate, all right, exactly. <laughs> Bilal and Common knew each other, because, you know, I used to go to the studio with him when he was recording Like Water for Chocolate, you know, and stuff wow. like that. So, you know, I was I was Bilal's jazz friend, you know. So Rashid used to call me to help me give get, get the musicians for his band. You know, so I would get him some musicians and go over to his house and give him piano lessons. And, and you know, I still all can't stuff. play he, the piano. And so. he still can't play. And well, you can't rap either. But <laughs> and, uh, I used to give him rap lessons too. Facts, you know, give facts. Him bars. Y'all know Robert yeah. Glasper got bars. We'll get a freestyle. I got, I got these bars. Sure. Oh, man, well, he you got the talking that. bars for sure. <laughs> <laughs> his shit talk bars since he's walked in the room 40 <laughs> minutes ago has been <laughs> unbelievable. It, it, it stopped right there with the talking bars. And Kareem, were you uh you was around during these days too, weren't you? You yeah, I moved to New York in uh, 1994. Yeah. Really? You've been in New York that long? Yeah. Because my original association with Kareem Riggins is Slum Village is the album, um, the one that came out in like, what, 2002? Volume 2. Vo it was on Volume 2. Okay. Well, I did one. I played drums on Volume 2, on 2 You, 4 You. Okay. And then I uh, did Trinity. And then, and then you stuck around and did Trinity. Yeah. So where did the where did the where did you jump into the picture? Where did Kareem get in? Actually, yeah, actually, me and Bilal. Well, when Bilal first got signed, the first producer they had him work with was Jay Dilla. So Bilal flew me with him. I was his music director at the time, and he flew me with him to to work with Dilla. And when we first went down to Dilla's basement, Kareem was down there, and I knew Kareem because he's a jazz drummer, and I, he was on some records that I have. So I didn't really know Dilla at the time. This is '98. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't know Dilla, but as soon as I got there, I was like, oh, Kareem Riggins! I started fanning out, like, oh my God! You know, like, I would have had him sign some shit if I had my, my CD. So that's literally how we met, through through Jay Dilla and the, 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 the Bilal connection. You know what I mean? So then after that, when you got to New York, we just, you know, we were just around the same. So Dilla is still, so Dilla is still the current that kind of runs through this whole group. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, even though I met, I met Kareem, I was going to check out some jazz in Chicago. He was playing with Roy Hargrove. And man, I went out there and I was man, I walked in there and it was like all these young jazz musicians. I'm like, damn. So Kareem was like, man, I know you. And I was like, damn, I was geeked. They knew who I was, that Reem knew. And then from there, we just, you know, got cool. Kareem formed my first band and he produced on a lot of music, a lot of my albums throughout 
you know, throughout the times. Uh, a lot of the stuff my father talked on, he produced on, but then just even on, on Electric Circus, you did some stuff. Yeah, the, hustle. the Hustle. And, and then a lot of joints. So anyway, we just been cool ever since then. And like, I knew these dudes, so it was like, they when they started producing, uh, we they produced my, my last album called Black America again. It was just like a real, we man, I felt like, man, inspired to just to just make music when I was with them. So we was like, man, let's just do a group, bro. Yep. Yeah. Now, Common, uh, fast forward, um, your voice, and there's a commercial, few commercials, I think, that yeah. you've, they've used your words and your voice on with regard to what's going on in, in society today and the social climate. And then obviously you're active on social media and, yeah. you know, um, and continuing the conversation around not only black community, but justice yeah and equal rights and, and things that everybody's fighting for right now and you've always been vocal about those things how does it feel that this is now um become commonplace you know what i'm saying uh, yeah, yeah well commonplace, uh, you like that mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i see how you rock <laughs> i was tired yeah i worked pretty on that clever. before you guys that was, that was pretty clever yeah. you get something for that one <laughs> uh so you know I, I first of all i started like with the music and making conscious music I was just listen, man. I was just listening uh, to hip, some hip hop from you know the '90s, just on my way here. And I was like, damn, people was saying a lot of stuff. That's where I learned a lot of things about just who I am as a black man. What were you listening to on your way here, by the way? Grand Pooba, um, okay. the song called Soul Controller. Okay, and he, you know he was like, who tell you when to work? The devil. Who tell you when you get your pay? The damn devil. You remember? I mean, Brand Nubians was re very revolutionary. But anyway, that. I always wanted my music, well, not, I ain't gonna say always, but my music evolved to being something socially conscious. But at a certain point, I was like, man, I gotta do more than just rap about it. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it comes to activism, it's, it's like for me, identifying things that I can be a part of the change, like things that really are dear to me, like social justice, black and Latino people getting the equality that we that we deserve, or women getting the equality they deserve. And, and but I but I only wanna, do the things that like where I could really like be a part of the change, like step in there and do something. So some a lot of that entails just me hooking up with with grassroots organizations that's doing it. Like I, I learned a lot from working on that movie Selma, man. People really work and strategize when it comes to to changing society. Mm. And it takes it takes time, it takes creativity, it takes passion, it takes everyday work. So I decided, you know, if I'm gonna be rapping about these songs, like we they produced a song called Letter to the Free for the uh, movie Thirteenth that Ava DuVernay directed about mass incarceration. I'm like, okay, I'm rhyming about it. I gotta go do something. So we went into the prisons in California and just started building with brothers. Yeah, you started doing shows too. You did yeah. a few shows too. We did shows, and then we ended up working on getting some bills, some bills um, passed that's dealing with life without parole in California. A lot of people that that were in since they were young are now being able, having an opportunity to get out. So that's where, I, that's where I am with it. And I think it's great that society, it's more people like wanting to do stuff, man, wanting to be a part of change. Um, do you feel like uh, the conversations you're having, right? Because I'm sure you're around a lot of powerful people, right? Whether it's on yeah. the political side, yeah. Hollywood, yeah. music. Um, do you feel like they're having conversations with you about change that they also want to be a part of or yeah. and do you believe them yeah. or do you think it's a lot of glad handing and people that just because it's cool to be yeah to be on aware the... and woke if you will right. that they're having these combos with you but they really when they went when they walked in there they voted for trump <laughs> no nah, but you know i like one of the first times uh, i was like like okay this is some people out there that really care was i that, that got power, because I always looked at corporations like, man, why ain't y'all doing nothing for the people, man? Like, you're a corporation, we support you. Well, Howard Schultz from the from Starbucks, he he called me like, I, I didn't know him or nothing. I only think he knew who I was until that, that um Situation song, in Philly. The Glory. No, no, no the song no. Glory? Oh, yeah, the, the song Glory. glory. Okay, so yeah. he, this was like in 2015, he hit me up and was like, man, because he started doing this after Michael Brown got killed. He was trying to meet up with different police departments and then figure out in his communities, he was having these community like gatherings for people in his store. Anyway, he sat down with me and was like, man, what can we do? Like, what what can we do together? And I was like, man, this is what I'm on. Cause he had some other ideas and I was like, what I'm on is trying to get jobs for young people, like trying to get, 
because a lot of people I've talked to in the communities, man, they like, man, we need opportunities. Jobs. We yeah. need jobs. Yeah, yeah. So he he gathered up some of the comp some of his CEOs he knew, and we did this hundred thousand job initiative, and it started in Chicago, and we had. We had kids, man, if they didn't know how to fill out their resume, we had training for that. And it was incredible people that teaching them. We had, man, people was coming in with their parents, their parents was bringing them. About 2,000 kids walked away with jobs. While we was filming the shot about a few months later, <coughs> excuse me, these, these two girls came up to me like, Common, we coming from the jobs we, that, that y'all got us. And it just moved me. I was like, yo, these, you know, when you connect with the right people, you can tell when people really want to do something because, you know, even if they don't have the ideas, and that's what I was talking about, sometimes it's just sitting down with people and getting to the right place and, and seeing what's going to be effective. And one of the most important things I talked to him about, and, and I believe for myself too, is just, man, you can't go in the communities like, yo, this is what we're going to do. You go in and, and talk to them and see what listen. they need. Yeah, you got to listen. Simple as that. Listen. I was going to ask you about because I saw you were part of the uh, the Starbucks anti-bias uh, campaign. Yeah. And I was, that's what I was going to ask you about, the connection. And how do you feel they rolled that out? Do you feel like they did a good job in um, kind of <clears> like, <throat> you know, with the shutting down of all the stores and, and the training? Well, I think they did a good job. It's a good step because, they you know, they, they got with some real people like Brian Stevenson and, and Michelle Alexander, who wrote The New Jim Crow, and, um, and also, you know, Eric Holder and different people who, who really are, like, think ahead and know about all these issues that we've been dealing with as, you know, as black and, and Latino people. Um, so the program seemed like it was really good. I, I narrated the program, and the only reason I initially did it, because, I, like I said, I knew Howard's and, and Starbucks right. had been trying to do some stuff from the beginning. But my thing was like, yo, it can't just be this one day. This day is great. We You talk this stuff, but what are, what are we going to do after? And that's what... We are we are stra we strategizing with them to say, hey man, let's go into some of these communities. There's people doing the work right now. Same place where your Starbucks is. It's some organizations that you can you can support or find out how to support. It's black colleges out there you can support. Like if you really want to extend your hand to to the black community, do something that's gonna be long term. So I feel like that day was the beginning, you know. So I, I'm glad they turned something negative into something good though. Right. Yeah. Um, Robert, let's uh, and, and Kareem. I want to switch gears, and we'll come to common last, cause just in case he gets political about it. Um, let's talk rap. Do you like Kanye West's new album? I haven't heard it yet. Mm. <laughs> political <laughs> convenient. Convenient. I honestly haven't heard. It. I asked my manager on the way. I asked Nicole. I said, "Have you heard? It? I haven't heard it yet." How come? Uh, I've been busy. Mm. <laughs> I've been busy. Were you always too busy for a Kanye <laughs> album? No. Or was it post MAGA hat? Now I'm no, busy. No, no, no. You know what? I've, I've never been like I'm not. I've never been the oh Kanye got an album. Let me rush and listen to it. Okay. Because I like to listen to stuff a lot of times after the hype goes away. Okay. So, fair enough. And then I'll listen. I, to I give you that. You know what I'm saying? Then after I can finish making my amazing music, you know what I'm saying? Phenomenal. As opposed, as opposed to, huh? As opposed to, I don't even know how to make other music. It's just that amazing. He's trying to. <laughs> don't listen, to Ebro. Kareem, have you listened to it yet? Uh, and what are your? I heard it one time through. Um, it may have to grow on me. So you didn't love it at oh, first? I did not. He got something on the last one. What, you got something on the last yeah, one. Yeah, 30 hours. What 30 do you hours. think is... Uh, you did 30 in, hours? Yeah. You produced it? You wow. produced that record? One of my favorites. 30 hours is amazing. I didn't even realize that was you. That's an amazing record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about August Green. This amazing group. August Green is an amazing group. And amazing Kareem Riggins is an amazing, Kareem, amazing piece. Kareem, so Ka you Kanye produced... Kanye also touched it and... Um, and somebody else. It was a bunch of... Oh, a few people. And were you invited into the Yay sessions? No. No. For any particular reason? No, not just, I'm kind of in my lane, you know what I mean? Um, it was an email thing. I emailed him the beat and... Got it. They were like, so we it was like around this. the time he was working on Yeezus stuff. Got it. So he had been sitting on that yeah. for a while. Um, and what don't you love about Ye um, as an album? I didn't say I didn't love it. I just, I just didn't connect to it yet. I heard it one time through. Some things have to grow on you. Do you think, for me, I, I won't reach and dig on this, but for me... I like. I will. I'll be back. <laughs> well, I I haven't. I'm a combination of both of you guys. I have not had time to sit and listen to it. But the reason I haven't made time is because I'm annoyed with Kanye. So it's not a top priority for me right now. The way it has been 
previously. Like Life of Pablo, even though the rollout was literally the most confusing mess in the history of rollouts, I was sitting there waiting yeah. for each moment. And in this case, <clears throat> while maybe a time will come when I'm waiting again, mm -hmm. I just wasn't trying to make that time. And so when I heard it, I heard pieces I liked, but it didn't connect to me right now. Yeah. But I feel like maybe one day it could. <sighs> Good. <laughs> Good music zone. <laughs> Comment. How you feel about this Yay album? Well, first, man, uh, I only gave it one listen. Why is that? Uh, when I was listening, I wasn't like, I wasn't connecting to it. I wasn't feeling like this is the spirit of the music that I really want to hear. Mm. And I don't care. If Based it, on the deliverer of the music? No, I wasn't a deliverer. Kanye is my brother. I love him. And I, no matter where he stands as far as, you know, politically, I don't agree with that, obviously. I don't agree with his political views, even though I don't think it's political. He just He's trolling, he just, marketing, he, making he just, noise. I think part of it is just like, oh, I like these aspects about this person, but he's not really thinking to the depths and the levels. And the only time I really, really got salty about what was going on with Ye was when Trump kind of turned it, spun it for his own benefit. Then I was like, ah, oh, man, this ain't right. But you yeah, know it was coming. It was so you easy. Was coming. Yeah, it was easy. Trump, was spun, easy. Trump spun things that are way further away than yeah, that. Yeah. They, right. they alley -ooped it. Trump yeah. came through with the... I know, I know. Donald Trump Jr. Know, came, he gave I it know. another one. And then <laughs> Trump gave it the top one. Yo, like, and then Chance know. inadvertently, <laughs> out the, the out-of-bounds pass, <laughs> the windmill <laughs> joint, they was all throwing it yeah. up. But at least Chance pulled that right. Yes, Chance was like, nah, nah, nah. Chance threw it to the wrong team by accident. Yeah, yeah, because you know Chance. Look, look I, you know Chance is uh, Chance is for the people. Yeah, and and I know that Chance probably was just trying to defend his brother the same way I am. I'm gonna be like, yo, it ain't. No, that's my family. Kanye, my family. So I ain't gonna never be like, yo, forget that. Like, it, I disagree with my family. My family All do some time. stuff. Like, my family do some stuff that creatively that I might be like, ah, oh, that's cool. I, this this project, when I heard it, I was like. Man, I don't want to listen to it again. It didn't make me be like, man, I want to play this music. Because I listen to music. I listen to all type of music, but I'm only digesting what I really want to hear. Like, the last album I thoroughly listened to was mm -hmm. Damn, uh, Kendrick's album. Like, when I, I, No, and that Jay-Z album. I like 444, mm -hmm. too. Right. But my point is, like, as far as hip-hop goes, <clears throat> it takes... I gotta, it got to be speaking to my spirit. But one thing I have to acknowledge, man, and we got to see is, like, Ye said it in his songs. He's dealing with different mental things that we have to recognize and as a as He tries a to unpack it on the album. As a community, I feel like I don't even look at this album and say, man, am I supposed to like it or not? I feel like it was, sometimes the artists just express where they are at that time and it's almost like, okay, I ain't even listening for, to this for judgment if it's good or bad. It's just like, man, that's where that dude is and that's what I gotta respect more than anything because as an artist and as a human being, this is what he, had to give, so you know I'm able to tell Ye, yo, this ain't yo, this ain't it for me. Did you tell him? I haven't talked to him yet. Well, well hi Kanye. <laughs> um, did uh, did he call you or did you reach out to him when uh, you saw the photo of the MAGA hat and the uh, Trump's? Uh, what did he say? I love Trump. Well, the Trump loving and then the slavery is a choice. All things that we feel like we yeah. mentioned to you. We've said from the beginning, and when he, Chicago got mentioned, we all thought Common would be the perfect person to impart some. Wisdom, but well, thank you. But I reached out to him, and and I was supposed to go see him at at this event, um, but I I couldn't make it. So I'm you know I'm gonna have my time with him, but I'm just one of his brothers. You so y'all ain't talked. People, we haven't talked. No, no we, but we saw John Legend speak out, and he's yeah. been very vocal about how he feels and yeah. how you know he's dealing with this situation. Others have not. And everyone kind of just tapped down. If it makes you feel it. any better, I've talked to him, and I told him he's fucking tripping, right? Multiple times, um, and I think other people have too. Right. Think, I know nah, other people have. You know yeah, other people. Exactly. Many people have. Many people yeah. have. And, and he's tried to unpack the Trump stuff as loving all humans and finding. Just because I dislike a lot of things about you or don't agree with a lot of things about you, don't mean that as humans we can't find common ground where we right. like aspects of one another. Which right. what he's trying to do. But as you know, Kanye very well. Yeah, he's not always the clearest when he communicates yeah. his thoughts. Right? Although I will tell you, I just had a tiny, the tiniest breakthrough when Common was talking about something Ye may have been trying or inadvertently trying to do. What? Well, you were talking about how he's your brother, and we all feel that way. You don't throw people away. You love them. 
in spite of these beliefs that we think are abhorrent and insane. And it did make me think about the conversation we were having about a family member yeah, of mine early. who voted I for Trump. Yeah, I just heard y'all conversation. So I was like, but we do have a tendency to throw away all people who have those beliefs. And I, with good reason, right? Like that's why, we, but at the same time, we're willing to give Kanye a little bit more because we know there's good in him. Yeah. But, yeah, but, he, start, I mean, but he started in a place. We know a person know. who started yeah. in a place that was like, okay, you know what's going on out here. Your mother knows what's going on out here, knew what was going on out here. You're from a place that knows what's going on out yeah. here. Everyone around you knows what's going on out here. We know that you've been living and existing in a place that is probably far removed from these things, so you've, you've gotten out of touch yeah. in your Calabasas palaces and all that. Um, and so I think that's the piece of it where we're like, yeah, that Kama said, I'ma see him, right? And we'll be able to have conversations. Yeah. Some people ventured out to TI, went to see him. Yeah. You know, but then there's also people who are going to see him and they have other agendas. Like they want they want to make a song or right. they want to be on a song or they want to get a beat. So are they really having... Well, that's the thing. I mean, look, like I said, that's, that's my brother. That's my family. So... I don't need nothing. I'm about to say that's the beauty, though. I, I, you're I, I, in a different spot. I don't need anything. I'm I'm good. I don't need no beats. I don't need no like. I don't need no camera time. I I it just be man to man because I want to see him well. And that's and one of the things like when I heard y'all talking about family members, it's easy. Like that's a family member, so you ain't gonna throw them out. I got family members and did a lot of stuff. They done did stuff against me, like you know. But I, at a certain point, you kind of. If if we threw out everybody that's doing wrong or did something that we disagree with, then that's why the, I mean that's why the world is the way it is. I ain't trying to preach on it, but it's just I mean you got like, the mustache, it, it, preach, brother, <laughs> preach, brother, preach. I mean, and, 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 and go on now, especially with me, like tabernacle. <laughs> yeah, you know, Come on, Jesse. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like me going to prison, me going to prison is honestly like you see people. I was talking with people that committed double murders. Mm. That was like some of the most humane people and most enlightened people I met. Some people go through those, you know, you know, and they acknowledged it and they couldn't get that life back, but they was trying to get their life back. So my thing is like, man, we see a brother that's dealing with Kanye didn't acknowledge, yo, I got mental. And he's been diagnosed and people have talked about the seeing the prescription pills. Like I've, you know, yeah. had people who firsthand was like, yo, yeah. he showed me what he's dealing with. Like, right. you know. But but that's why I mean part of I mean, our whole thing with mental health and all that, like First thing they do is give you pills and all that. It's got to be some other solutions. We talk. To that. We, yeah. we have a lot of extensive conversation about the things we're putting in our bodies. Yeah. Um. As the mental health issues are taking place in our society, because we're seeing it a lot, right? We see a lot of people suffering, yeah. going through things, depression, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But we only talking about the prescription pills. Yeah. Some of these people are on prescription pills and drinking alcohol. Yeah. And some of these people are on prescription pills and haven't even vetted the food they eat and then the you know, I, I you know, I get into high fructose corn syrup talk and all yeah, these other yeah. addictive mm -hmm. foods yeah, that addictive. were you know what I'm saying, poison them ourselves. Pills, them pills can be I mean, think about it, man. I mean, like some of our greats, man, eventually we lost because of their addiction to some painkillers. Mm. Like whether it was yeah. Yeah. Mike, like Mike, Mike, Prince. Prince. Mike and Prince. Mike and Prince. Like and those are the things that the first thing those doctors do is yo, take these pills. And now You're we see our OGs and we see our young are young people self-medicating yeah. and taking it to another level. Like addiction is insane. I'm more than I haven't seen it within the young community. Cause I work with kids too. And it's, they talk about it like it's nothing, like it's candy. Well, yeah. you know, and also too, it goes back to, remember, I know y'all, we all old enough to remember when they first started putting those prescription drug commercials on TV. Yeah, yeah. You know oh yeah, you mean like the, the ones we see all the time now with like the, the side effects see, and if you're yeah. watching TV late yeah. night and there ain't no other commercials to run, they just run those yeah. joints that are like, yo, your your nostril hairs is too long, yeah. take this pill and it yeah. might, I mean, your eyes might bleed and you might die, but you won't have long nostril hairs anymore. It's like, what? what? It's like, what about like, scissors? Like, 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 no, 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 take the pill. You might die. Huh? You might die, but you know your knee gonna stop bouncing. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, it's so true. So um, let's get to rap beef. Uh. You, sir, have been in a rap skirmish with Mr. Drake. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. I thought, and we thought at the time, I really enjoyed that. And Thank we you. thought it was a pretty intense beef. It was, and, it was. It and, was then, a, um, and then, um, and then, <laughs> and then, Canada, Canada Dry. And then this yeah. one got very, got very real. This one, it got it real intense, man. Take, uh, take us through how you watched the whole thing play out and what you enjoyed, didn't enjoy. Well, what, uh, 
you know, when I, I was listening to Pusha's album and I and I, I was actually, I hadn't even deciphered the, all of the stuff he was saying, you know, so, you know, because I'm used to, honestly, usually when dudes throwing jabs, I kind of know what's going on. Like, yeah, because you made bitching you where you call yeah, Ice Cube I call, a bitch. Yeah, I call, yeah. Well, you did it subtly. I, yeah, yeah. What? Well, it's called bitch. The song yeah. was, yeah, right. Yeah. And it, and it was, <laughs> when he says, kind of I think the first words are, uh, a bitch with an attitude named Cube. So yeah, you were pretty clear. I guess, <laughs> I guess in retrospect, that was clear. Yeah, that's, that's my guy, yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy, we did a movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Things do work out. Things, Things do work out. out. Things work out. But with this beef going on right now, I was like, yo, push, push gave him that jab, and then Drake came back good, oh, man. Drake, I was like, yo, Drake, Drake coming through. Like, right, right, he been right. rocking we with it, yo. He's, and then, you know, with the whole little thing he put on the internet, on uh, the invoice, it was adding a f little something. And when Push came, I just sat there and listened to. It. I was like, man, it's hard when you, when you attack somebody's character. That that like especially when you exposing stuff that people don't know, but it's yeah. truth in it. Man, Push. The only part I felt was like crossing the line was when he's talking about forty. Yeah. You know, I feel like. Like man, you know you went after his homeboy life. sickness. Yeah, like, that's I mean it's life. Step. It's life. Excuse me. I, I, like you know, it's people's lives, and when people dying, you got family members that die, friends that have died. You kind of value life more, so you don't want to see nobody putting that out there. But going at it, the way he went at them, otherwise, I think it's a great battle, man. I love that they throwing. But you, as you know, you've had rap beef before because we we've been talking about and debating about oh, like going Farrakhan too far. Minister Farrakhan sat down with him too. Yeah. Minister yeah. Farrakhan like, like, sat down with him and Cube right? and was like, "Yo, chill out." Yeah, so do you feel like that because yeah, you're mature now? You're a different person because we battle it. Is there a line to cross when you're beefing with somebody? You know, like is look, that possible? I mean, look, people go too far because some people are like this is rap. When you battling right. somebody let, is. Let me tell you, you definitely get emotional about it. I don't care. Like, it, meaning, you be like, man. Sometimes when you see it, like we, when we early on when we saw Mac Ten and them, my guys, we was ready to go at them, and they was ready to go at us. Nothing really happened. They were surprised. They just thought I was a backpack dude. But my point is that. You, like, it's no way when you see that person that you don't feel a certain way. Even when me and Drake had beef, the, one of the things that, that really squashed it, we was at the Grammys, nobody kind of know this story. We was at the Grammys and I, and, and he saw me and um, he was with his security and a couple guys and I was with one of my guys and, and, um, and we, we confronted each other. And I was like, what's up, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then his security was like, man, his father, you know, something, something, something he brought up his father. I kind of was like, I got to respect his father. This is his father, man. Yeah. Like, you know. And now you got his father's mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Give me that yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> you done took his father's yeah. mustache. Yeah. I thought you respected yeah. Drake's dad. They've been yeah. calling me. Yeah, they've been calling me LeVar Le Ball, too. <laughs> <laughs> Le Ball. Yo, it's too bad SNL season's over. You can walk in right now. Hit LeVar Ball. I love it. Right there. Yeah. So that, but that's, it's dope to hear that because people do for Get. When Cuban Common was going at it, Minister Farrakhan stepped in. Like yeah, it was right. a full fledged yeah. sit down. Yo, so I think in reality, both them dudes probably feeling something, but you know, hopefully they smart enough, like, yo, we got, we both doing things in life. We ain't gonna take it to that level. I ain't, like you said, you know, when you're younger, you feel a certain way, but regardless, younger or older, you be. When somebody's saying things they said, you you get affected by it point blank. Yeah, comments still affected. I was in the hallway earlier and I heard someone go, yay, yeah, yay, yeah, and he ducked. <laughs> 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 turned around quick. I was like, no, I'm okay. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking Pusha T probably went that far to make sure Drake responded. I'm sure. And then he might have gone, he, he, he might have gone too far. Drake doesn't need to beef. I'm sure. No. Drake doesn't need to beef. And, no. he you know let it, and he let it be known that he has more. Yeah, that's, but, but I'm saying, but the like, first thing he threw was like a little jab, and then Drake took that. That's one true. That, Drake he, did respond. Drake with went him. hard at you, man. Kanye too. Yeah, he, he did. went hard at right. Kanye. I mean, they was letting out real feelings. You could tell Drake was saying what he really felt. Like, man, and and Drake wrote uh, yikes, yikes on the Ye yeah. album. So yeah, how do you, that's man. the part that I find very interesting. And how does this get handled? Drake writes a record, it gets used, and doesn't get credited. No, I, somebody sent me the credit. I think it did. That wasn't real. I don't think that. Was, I don't think that credit's legit. Really? I don't think the actual credits have him credited. I'm gonna look right now. He's gonna get his bread. Let's just be honest. I mean, like That's gonna get. He'll be he all right. Yeah, he said the rhyme. Right? He, he said the rhymes. Uh, Drake wrote the hook. Wow. 
Drake, oh, Drake with the hook. For yikes. Uh, okay. Medicine, nah, nah, right now. That whole, that okay. thing. I don't know what they're talking about, but you get the idea. Okay. He ain't heard that. I ain't heard the record. Oh, you didn't hear it. That's right. Yeah. But it's, it's actually, I think it's one of the two best songs on the album. Mm-hmm. In my one time listening, but it's an interesting beef, man. There's a lot of layers to it. Yeah, it and is. And it's been going on a long time with, you know, the Lil Wayne component with the backstory of Mr. Me Too going all the way back. Yeah. That's where it really, you know, because Pusha was going at Wayne mm-hmm. back then, yeah. Jack and Pharrell style, kept taking shots, and then Drake jumped in, and then Pusha kept jabbing him, jabbing yeah. him, jabbing him. And then finally, Drake comes with this. And that's another interesting piece of the whole thing is Drake came back with the Dumpy Freestyle, which is fire, knowing he got an album on the way. Yeah. And took the risk of the marketing promotional moment hit hard. Yeah, he hit hard. Drake Drake and, came and and, and and Push came back. Push was, was ready for the moment. I, yeah, I respect both of them. They both, you know, and Push came back like, yo, I'm I'm with it. Let's with get the this artwork, ring. the blackface artwork. Yeah, that were you yeah, surprised that. were you surprised when you ended up at that stage in your career in another one with, with Drake? Oh uh, yeah, I definitely was. But it was like man, for me it was one of those things where where I was just talking like what, what y'all said about I'm used to in diss records like I know somebody coming at me but I was like feeling like Drake was throwing a couple little jabs but I couldn't tell if it was me or not so I'm like look man it, it feel like it's me <laughs> so I'm about to just have to confront you about it you know and yes officially not on the credits officially not not on the credits but he's not the only person who got apparently there are other people who also weren't credited so you could make an argument that just the That's credits just aren't that down. complete Robert, this um, August Green project, right? You're also working on a solo project, too. And if those watching don't know uh, the significance or understand the musical significance of both Kareem and Robert Glasper in the larger sonics of soul music of the last 15 years, including Maxwell and live performances, live shows, um, I suggest all of y'all go and check their, their resume, discographies. You know, it's funny. I forgot. I'm actually on Untouched the Sky. Kanye's what, 2004? Wow. Yeah. yeah I Late registration. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Just Blaze hit and found me on the internet. <laughs> and Rain. I went down to the studio and I Damn, played. you got credits. You don't even remember. Yeah, Damn. I'm talking about. That's crazy. Yeah, I forgot what we were talking about. I was like, I'm going to touch this guy. I forgot. Yeah, forgot about touch this guy. For, for, you know, I for, forgot I'm on Kanye's get him high. I know. That's it. Whatever. I forgot. I'm I think on. it was late <laughs> registration. Whatever. You forgot. You're right. Yo, you forgot you did the food with Kanye, too. Yeah, yeah, Yo, why did you do Yo, why did um? Why did you put the? I don't know if I've asked you this before, but why did you put the live version of the food on the album? Oh, uh, because um, honestly, that one had more energy. Once we recorded it, like the recorded version, I never could get it to the level. Like even when I went back in, because we we did Dave Chappelle in before we released it. Right. And it was obviously before we released it, but it was like I, after I heard Dave Chappelle's version, I was like, that was always the one. You- that was the one. It could. It is. And we thought it was, you know, something unique to do to just put a little live version, especially it was Dave, Ch- Dave Chappelle's show was just so fucking dope. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. It's classic now. Yeah, it's just so interesting. Yeah. You're right. It, it's so unique that a random live song is yeah, on an album. Exactly. Yeah. With everything else. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you guys, after this August Green Project, you guys are touring now together as a unit? Because I know y'all tour separately, yeah. too. Yeah, we're going to go out on tour, like, in the fall, collectively, as August Green, but... You know, these guys touring. Rob got a new project coming out. Yeah, I got a new Ring. project called R plus R equals now. Um, the album comes out to, uh, June 16th. It's yeah. myself, Christian Scott on trumpet, Terrace Martin mm. on saxophone and some production stuff, um, Taylor McFerrin and uh, Justin Tyson, Derek Hodge, myself. Y'all know Terrace is the guy who... Everything, yeah. Kendrick, yeah. Yeah. Kendrick, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Kendrick. Um, Robert, can you talk about the the jazz world a little bit too? Because I mean, I'm sure people are like, Ebro, stop with the fucking jazz shit." But <laughs> they don't quite, they don't quite under, probably don't understand what Terrace Martin is doing, what you're doing, Kamasi Washington is yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, I'm trying to think. There's a, a um, Thundercat, yeah, Thundercat, yeah. Thundercat, yeah, sure. um, and these guys are doing for hip hop and giving new. New producers and new breath sounds to create from. Can yeah. you talk about what you guys are as jazz artists working on? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're as jazz artists, you're, you you kind of come up knowing, you know, kind of playing the history of the music. Especially a lot of us, all the cats you mentioned, we went to like college for in high school for for jazz. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you learn the history of the music, but then we're influenced by people like Common and Kareem and stuff like that. So that's we're trying to tell our story, who we are, and mix that in with what we've learned. You know what I mean? So. That's where your Thundercats and your Kamasis and Terrace. I've known Terrace since we were 15 years old. Wow. You know what I mean? We went to jazz camp together, like jazz camp. 
See, I knew you were that like big a nerd. Camp. You guys I didn't like, know was Terrence was camp. that big a nerd. No, too. Terrence was a huge nerd. That big, wow. Yeah, he was y'all. Yeah, yeah, totally, camp. totally. I love it. And after Jazz, Jazz Camp, when I first got to New York in 1997, he called me and he's like, hey man, you want to go on a tour with me? I was like, with who? He said, Snoop Dogg. I was like, what? <laughs> You know, like, yeah, I'm MDing Snoop Dogg now. I was like, what the fuck? You know, so yeah. he was calling me a lot for that stuff. And, you know, I was seeing him kind of going in that route. You know what I mean? And, and once I, once I, you know, I'm, once I met Bilal and started hanging out with, you know, Common, to come to my trio shows when I was in, you know, playing in Brooklyn, small spots, Common and Q-Tip and Most Def, you know, all those cats, Talib, just come to my trio shows and rock with me. So I was always having the, the, the jazz mixed with hip hop thing. You know, that was just a real... Well, and, and it's just it's it's cousins anyway, right? Because yeah, exactly. even yeah, there's exactly. all of it, right? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. everything that we've ever loved about hip hop comes from exactly. Yeah. And Kareem is one of the first people to, to for, that I've seen. Kareem with Roy Hargrove, like one of the first cats to really cross over like that because he's a legit jazz drummer, but also one of the best hip hop drummers. So that we uh, have, you Kareem, know I, mean? I want to ask you. We had uh, the, the the one time I had a real hip hop uh, interview with Kanye a few years ago. We, he talked about how his admiration of Dilla was drums. Like he never felt Kanye never felt his drums were that strong, mm. and always felt that like Dilla was able to tap into something drum wise. Who are your all time favorite hip hop drums besides yourself, in terms of people who were able to get that that right? Dilla, he's number. Is he just the hands down he, number he one? He is because he knew how to emulate. He knew how to manipulate the machine to to be a drummer. So I would I would give him he's my and that's favorite. the bounce you're talking yeah, specifically about how yeah, it bounces yeah, yeah. the sequence the way he uh, the nuances the ghost notes dude you know Questlove too Questlove is is amazing he's one of my favorites when we was working on beat J D gave uh, J Dilla gave Ye this record some drums we went to the studio Kanye was like man I got drums from Dilla he was so geek man His, it was like. He was like a kid, man. He was just so geeked to get And it drunk. was just a random it, record it, it, that he knew he, he'd want, like yeah. Dylan knew he'd fuck with? Yeah, at the time, J.D. and I was staying in L.A., so Ye came over the crib, and Dilla was playing the drums on the, the record like he had found a break or whatever. And he was like, you want these? And he just gave them to Ye, and Ye was like telling everybody in the studio, I got these from Dilla. So, you know, it's my, <laughs> a lot of people had admiration for, for J.D., of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the drums and the, and the way manipulated the machines. The um, Kanye, and if you ever take time to listen, one of the my frustrations with the Ye album is what you guys are talking about with regard to the way it's it's glued together, right? Like I feel like he's trying to push somewhere, um, but there's something about it that feels disjointed. But I think one thing, you know, from just. When I was talking to Ye, he was telling me he was doing boom bap, like, like he was like, Ross, man, I'm sampling, come to the studio, we, I'm sampling. Yeah, that's I'm what gonna, everybody been telling that's us That's what everyone that. said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so. And I on think Push's album, I feel like. He was, he was on that, right? It was yeah. in there. I think, but, but as you, I mean, you've seen it, I think he said, or I, I saw it somewhere where he, this project he just did in, he changed everything and probably did it within the past two weeks. Right, and that's they why I said say that he changed the it moment. after the, uh, TMZ. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Event. Sometimes people be in a moment, and I, that's why I ain't really judging it like that for me. The, especially when you look at a person's body of work, I'm just like, that, that's what happens with uh, artists. Some artists, they're going to deliver like, I mean, look how many classics that dude got. Of course. Sometimes, you know, you catch a moment, and it might not be the one to connect with, with everybody. You have a classic album with Kanye. Would you, how come you haven't? Went back to do some more. I mean, it just gotta be, we gotta be working together and be around each other because like, I make those, we make the best music when like we just vibing and it's just like, a, it's a real connection. So because I haven't been around a lot and been in that spirit, cause we, you know, we making that music, we both like, oh man, this is, this, this is it right here. This feel good. So I would have to be in the same place musically cause if he thinking something is dope and I'm thinking, oh man, that ain't dope, then then it ain't gonna work. That's right. You, you know, guys so, gotta be in spirit. Yeah, we gotta step. be in spirit. Yeah, so I, that's why I'm always like, you hear me saying, I wanna sit down and be around and then, you know. But you're not opposed to it. No, nah, no, nah, that's my brother. I, that would be great. That would be incredible. I love to make some more music with him. But, you Comment, know, that, ain't, that ain't the agenda. That ain't where I'm at right now. I strongly suggest, uh, I'm gonna send you the link. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've made very few Spotify playlists. Like, I just don't really do that. But I don't know why one day. Are you promoting I was, yourself? 
Well, there's nothing to promote. Yes. This is, no, this is personal. <laughs> yes. This isn't personal. I'm not, I, don't get, I don't promote this anymore. Patting yourself on the back for an amazing I just want to see what he thinks. I just want to see what he thinks. Feedback from... A, I want to get feedback from the artist himself. But for some reason, I want to make a common playlist. Because we, we had a conversation recently about like your catalog. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong. You are widely revered in hip-hop. But I sometimes do feel like your catalog's a little slept on. Yeah. Because like, people just love you generally... But I don't feel like the music focus is strong enough sometimes. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, I, and what you're saying is very valid because it'll be like people be like, yo, I like you comment. But I could tell when I'm at certain shows, they don't know the music. Well, I've seen still, you. They still like me. And I've seen you like, at corporate shows before, too. I've seen you like at NBA events when you're yeah. performing. And you could tell a lot of people, they're like, all right, like I know the light. Right, like I'm, right. I'm waiting for the one. Yeah. And when you're, if you're a hip hop head. You want that resurrection. And you, go, you want yeah. that. So, so man, y'all should have came. Man, I, my new performance, man, I go through a whole catalog, and I, and it's almost like theater. I just did a show up in um, Brooklyn at the Celebrate Brooklyn. Y'all got to come to it. You run man. through the whole, you run through I the history? I go through, man, from the beginning. But it's really done like a play in a way. So, mm. yeah, oh, you got to check it here's out. My, here's a very quick version of my, my greatest hits that I put up for you. And it ends it ends a little early, like five years ago, maybe it cuts off. Take It Easy, Breaker 1-9, Resurrection, Used to Love Her, Communism, Chapter 13, Invocation. Retrospect for life, making a name for ourselves, wow. which had me trying to tweet at cannabis and get a hold of cannabis because yeah. how nice he was. Yeah. On that. Can, I, can I say something? Well, yeah. First of all, Please. you know them joints. That, that makes me. Man, thank you, bro. Who doesn't like, know like, that? Like, this is like, classics. Like, that's second, like one on one. That's, second, that's, 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 that's you know hip hop college that's, radio that's backpack exactly, one on one. Man, one. The fact, but I got to say, I was listening in, in construction of the show. I was listening to making a name for ourselves, and my homies always told me I got ripped by cannabis. And I got ripped by cannabis on that song. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he bodied me. He bodied me. I was like, what was I doing? Your cannabis, this? the like, first internet rapper ever, and and was so good. At that so moment good. when you got him, it was like people were waiting for the album still. And it was it was after he had the battle. Yeah, with, and, but like it was when he was starting to just feel I remember Universal actually sent out a record and on the record they put like six freestyles on the back. Cause that's really all yeah, he had was these freestyles. Yeah, yeah, them, but you had the feature and the and he and he and it's like, well, how's he gonna handle getting in there with like a and he really he, no, he handled body, it. He body. It, ain't, it ain't many times I'm gonna say I got bodied on it. I got bodied. <laughs> Shout out to cannabis. <laughs> and then there's um one too many doing it, six cents, Thelonious. The questions, the B intro, your oh, intro it, game between it, invocation it, and B, yeah, yeah, it, your intro game's crazy. Yeah, yeah. The food, love is go. Oh, that's for you know for the for the wifey. Wife loves yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> um, driving me wild, underrated, classic. Thanks, man. Um, the game. So far to go, break my heart, Ooh. South Side, the people. Oh, man. That's all it. There's all corners. Corners. All corners. All corners. corners. I have corners. I corners. No, you know what you said. That's a dope list. 1999. 1999. Whoa. It wasn't, I don't think it was on Spotify. 1999. That's all. Yo, 1999. That's crazy. Yo, y'all getting me geeked up, man. Yeah, I don't know if you should know. You should know that you have a body of work, my friend. I'm ready for studio tonight. Yeah, I know. That's what got me geeked. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. yeah. I think I think there is a there is a there's a certain type of common that people know, and then there's a obviously the person you are today that people yeah. know, yeah, right? But that. then there's for hip hop fans, if you've really done this and been around this, people know another. Yeah. There's like you you have three. There's three different comments, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. But, I mean, now there's a fourth with the mustache. But I'm just saying, there's, there's two yeah. mustache yeah. comments. Yeah. But mustache yeah. comments yeah. gonna yeah. live. You know that. It's never nah, going man. away. Look after this. Hey, no, my man. After this, it's the day never... after they yell cut, it's a wrap. Done. Yeah, Yo, but it's gonna boy. live forever, like the yarn pants. You know the yarn <laughs> pants. That's a fifth comment. Yeah. Yarn pants comment and mustache comment. Oh <laughs> man, the yarn pants, man. Damn. Yo, do you ever think oh, that no. hip hop's a crazy space? Common got. In, in in the circles of us who like loved him, Common had got pre getting dragged, got dragged on Electric Circus. He's yes. out here wearing the yarn sweaters, <laughs> yo. And when you compare that to relative, like now what Kanye is dealing with, yo, he got dragged for just wearing a sweater. People yeah. didn't like yeah, bro. it. Wasn't a MAGA hat. Yeah. People were just like, yo, what's Erica dressing him up here? We don't like that. <laughs> yeah, they, they for being in love. You got off. dragged for being in love. Being in love. Yeah, too. Plus, holding the signs. Holding the signs. Plus, 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 I got dragged for being in love and. Cast is like, why are you dressing like that? What are you doing, man? Like this, you out there too much, and and they thought it was because of 
because of yeah. Erica. So it was like. Well, so you was going through some. You was I mean, going... I was in love. I was in oh, love, yeah. bro. I wasn't afraid of that. He wasn't but that wasn't the no I was d- dressing. You didn't put on a MAGA hat. No. Yeah, nah. You I put mean, on a went, yarn hat. Yeah, okay. that's about that. <laughs> yeah, yarn yeah, hat. He yeah. let some incense. He put on a yarn hat. What was I hurting? Knock chocolate and yarn is way better. What was I hurting, right? Come on. He had a song called Knock Chocolate. That's how Terry's Exactly. Exactly. Yo, go get that August Green, man. Give it up. Common, Kareem Riggins, Rob. Robert Glasper, I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for tripping us, man. Love you guys, man.